to take a few minutes at the beginning of class to address that. And so let me download what we were working on last time, and I'll use these examples to accomplish it. So let me pull down the examples we were working with last time. All right, so here we have our prototype one that we started last time, and here's the home page for it. All right, so if we want to go and create um, a portfolio, let's say this is one of the things that we wanted on our portfolio. we would have all the folders in our portfolio folder. So prototype one, prototype two, and then I'm going to create a portfolio home page here. So let me go into notepad, plus plus. And I'm going to create portfolio home page here, JTML. One thing I do, by the way, is as soon as I put in the starting tag, I put in the ending tag. That's a good way to make sure that you do it. Because on occasion, I'll see students that don't have an ending tag for something. And again, your page might still work, but there's a potential for problem. So let's imagine I'm making a portfolio. And I'm going to have a, in my nav section, I'm going to have an ordered list, an ordered list, I mean, to my two examples. So, I'm going to save it as. an HTML file, and I'm going to call it index.html because that's a good name for a home page. All right. Notice that if I want to make a link to one of these pages, if I want to make a link to index.html here, it's not in the same folder. 
So the rules that we did at the beginning of class of, well, it's in the same folder, that's what, you know, you just put the file name. We can't use that there. So what we have to do is we have to put the name of the folder, a slash, and then the file name. I'm going to change it to prototype 1 and prototype 2 without any spaces. Because it's probably best if you don't have any spaces in your folder names or file names. So I'm going to say a href equals, put the folder that you go down to, prototype 1, slash, and then the file name, index.html. And we'll call that prototype 1. So the difference is, is when it's in a different folder, if it's in a folder underneath it, you put the folder name, a slash, and then the file name. If it was two folders deep, you'd put folder name 1, slash, folder name 2, slash, file name. And we can do the same thing for prototype 2. Just that we're going to go down to the prototype 2 folder. Okay. So now when we do this, if we view our home page, the prototype 1 and prototype 2, we click on the link, we get our first prototype. Now to get back to it, we have to go in here and we have to insert a link. And I'm just going to put the link right here. We have to go from this folder up to where our portfolio is. The way you designate going up a folder in the directory structure is with two dots and a slash. So I would say a href equals dot dot. That will take me up to the portfolio's main folder, and then I put the portfolio's homepage name. And then we can make a link for Portfolio Home. And we'll do that to all our pages. So now, we can go to our page one, and we can click back to go to our Portfolio Home. So remember, if you're going down a folder, you put the name of the folder in, slash, and then the name of the file. If you're going down several folders, you put all of the folder names with a slash. So that's how we go down a folder. Folder name slash. To go up a folder, you simply use dot dot slash. That's because a folder can have many children underneath it, but every folder only has one parent folder. It's only contained in one folder. So you don't need to specify the name of the folder. Dot dot takes you up to the parent folder. So I hope that helped. then you do dot, dot, slash, dot, dot. So if you're two folders deep, to get up two folders, you do dot, dot, slash, dot, dot. So dot, dot, the pair dot is one folder. The pair of dots is one folder, right. The dot, dot, slash takes you up one folder. OK, so <laughs> we left off on, por on uh, our portfolio example two. And we were starting to get into a different um, way of um, laying out our page. The first method of laying out our page is we really didn't do anything to lay out our page, right? We just used what was called the flow. We didn't do anything as far as the positioning of the page goes, which means that things stacked as blocks. The block tags on our page, the main sections of our page, the header, the nav, the section, the footer, all stacked up as blocks. And so the first thing up here is the header, then we have the nav, then we have the section, then we have the footer. 
And it's like that for all of our pages. All right. Now, that will give us the flow. And that's the default that the browser will use. If we don't specify, if we don't override that default, the browser will put it in that order. All right, we'll use the flow as the methodology. Now in our second example of our prototype, we sort of left off with a cliffhanger where we had a little bit of messiness. All right, and the reason for that is because we put some styling in to take control of the position of the, of the elements on our page, but we left some of them up to the flow. So in this example, if I bring up the home page and I bring up the style sheet, the only thing I put a position to was the header. And therefore, the rest of the stuff on the page, it positioned according to the flow, just like it did before. So if we assign a position, which we did, to the header, we said the position was absolute. Absolute means it gets glued down to that position of the page. The top uh, 50 pixels from the top, the left 50 pixels from the left. So that put that element on the page we were going to find that 50 from the top, 50 from the left. If we make this 150 from the top, 150 from the left, puts it down there. But absolute means it's glued down there. All right? This is the kind of layout like I did <coughs> when I was on the school paper. When, we were, when I was on the school paper as a kid, we would have a big sheet of paper we would typewrite the articles on the paper, and we would cut them out and glue them into place. And then we sit, sent them to the printer. All right? So we glued them down. So they were, they were there. All right? There was no like, well, this goes after that. We said exactly where we wanted it to appear, and that's where it appeared. Now, the problem with this is, since we gave position to one thing using position absolute, that takes it out of the flow. Whereas, since we didn't give position to the nav, to the section, and to the footer, those elements remain in the flow. And that isn't going to mix very well. So if you take control over one element of the page and take it out of the flow, you probably have to take control of all of the elements on the page, at least all of the main elements on the page, and assign them a position. So I'm going to go after a look that looks like this. This is the wireframe I'm after on this page, on this version of the prototype. I want the header to be like this. I want the nav to be over here. I want the section to be here. And I want the footer to be over there. OK? So I'm going to give the other elements on the page the proper position to achieve that sort of look. So I'm going to go into my CSS. I'm going to say I'm going to sort of rough it out at first by like guessing at some of these numbers. And then I'm going to refine it to get it to look the way that I want to. The top, I'm going to say um, I want to be 150, let's say, and the left, 50 pixels. The section, I'm going to say I want the left to be. Two hundred fifty pixels, and the top one hundred fifty pixels. The nav I want the top to be four hundred fifty pixels, and the left fifty pixels. 
I already did the nav. This should be the footer then. I'm also going to give these guys a width. And I'm going to give this guy a width of 100%. This guy I'm going to give a width of 175 pixels. This one I'm going to give a width of, oh, let's do this. Let's make this 600 pixels. This I'm going to make a width of, 400 pixels. And this I'll make a width of 600 pixels. So I just sort of rough that out. And that's how it looks like. It looks to me like these have to, the, the nav and the section have to come down and the footer has to come down a lot. So I'll make the footer, the top be 650, the section have a top of 250, and the nav have a top of 250. All right. We're getting there, right? I could go and then uh, maybe tweak these a little bit. get the look that I wanted. So we're st starting to get the look that I have described on the wireframe that I sketched out. All right. I can definitely then do a lot more stuff with this if I wanted to. All right. I could put a border around the header if I wanted to. So I can say border. Two pixels, solid, black. That gives us that. There's no space between the border and the text. Yes? Yeah, we... Uh, there's a couple ways that we can do that. Let's get through this example, then maybe we can talk about um, how to do that. Using the absolute layout, actually, we would need to do it for each individual one. All right, but there's other ways that we can do it as well. The space between the border and the elements is called what? Padding. padding. So I can go here and give a padding of 10 pixels, let's say. And that looks a little bit better. Now, I want to show you something in these properties. Because if we look up CSS properties for border, we're going to see that there's actually several border properties. There's a border style. There's a border width. And there's a border color. There's also a border top style, a border right style, a border bottom style, and a border left style. I didn't use any of these. I just said border. All right. I said border, two pixels, solid, and black. The alternate way of writing this is border dash width, two pixels, border 
dash style solid border dash color black. And if I do that, we're not going to notice any difference on the page. Appears the same. What I had before was simply one line that said border two pixel solid and black. So these are two alternatives how you could specify the different properties of the border. Because there's more than one property to the border. There's how thick it is. There's the style. You could have it solid or da dashes or dots or other possibilities. And then finally, there's a border color. Does the order of specifying the parameters matter, or can you do border solid two pixel black? Let's try it. Take this out. To answer your question, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the browser's smart. The browser knows that the word solid is not a color, and solid is not a width. All right? And solid only makes sense for the border style. So it sees solid and says, OK, that must be the border style. Two pixels isn't a border style. Two pixels isn't a border color. Two pixels must be the border width. And then finally, black is not a style. Black is not a width. Black is a color. So the browser is smart enough when you use these shorthand properties to look at the values that you give it and figure out which specific property you mean. All right. Which one you use is entirely up to you. All right. You can even take it even further and give a different style to each side of the border if you wanted. I can make the left border solid, the right border dotted. and get that. If I don't specify, if I just specify a style, it assumes it's a style for all four directions. So these two are equivalent. I usually use the shorthand simply because it's the way I learned it, and it seems more concise way of describing that. But you do have the other one available, especially if you want to do things in a different direction. For example, what I could do is do a border bottom style of solid. And that effectively is going to give me a line underneath it, like that. So that's what I mean by shorthand property. There's also shorthand properties for things like padding, for things like margin, and even border width. All right. And if I give one number for the padding, it means that there's that much padding in all four directions. All four directions meaning the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. And it does it in exactly that order. 
I'm going to change this back to border style solid. So if I gave 10 pixels padding, there's at least 10 pixels from the border to the text. I could say bot padding right 10 pixels, padding top 100 pixels, and specify the individual paddings for these. They gave me a lot of padding on the one side, no padding on the left, and so on. You had a question? Good question. If you gave the heading a, a certain background color, the background color goes up to the border. So the padding will also get that color as well. But the margin will not. All right? So if I gave a background color of, let's say, RGB, 200, 200, 200. It's a very light shade of gray, right, because I have all three, red, green, and blue, in equal amounts. So you know it's on the spectrum between black and white. Because these numbers are closer to 255 than they are to zero, it's a lighter shade of gray. And to answer your question, it's within that, all right? I'm going to set the border back to, or the padding back to the where I wanted it. Uh huh. Uh. I don't, I, I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but I don't think it would do what, what it is you wanted it to do. Okay. I can specify the padding in all four directions just by putting the padding as like this. And what this does is this goes in clockwise starting at the top. The first number is for the top. So this would be 100 pixel padding on the top, 100 pixel padding on the right, 100 pixel, no, I'm sorry, 10 pixel padding on the top, 100 pixel padding on the right, 100 pixel padding on the bottom, and 2 pixel padding on the left. So you go clockwise. The four numbers are top, right, bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, and left. If I only do two numbers, it repeats them. Top, right, bottom, left. That's why when we do the famous thing that we did before of margin, 0px auto, 0px on the top, automatic on the right, 0px on the bottom, automatic on the left. I guess what I'm saying is just be aware that some of these properties, there are long ways and short ways to do it. The long way gives you more control. The short ways are a little more concise. All right? I won't even say the long way gives you more control. The long ways make some things obvious, all right? Whereas some things are implied with the um, shortcuts. Like if I say border two pixel solid black, it's the exact same as saying this, it's just implied that two pixels has to be the width, black has to be the color, solid has to be the style. Okay, so let's go and let's make this look a little more like a finished page. 
by playing around, we, we did something to the header, and I think that looks pretty good. Let's do something with the navigation. Now, here's where we're going to have a little bit of fun with the navigation. All right. Uh, first of all, I'm going to make it a little bit wider. I gave it 200, uh, 175 pixels. Let's give it 275 pixels. All right. And I can give this. Push this over a little bit. Let's give a border on this. Now we're going to style the links. All right. I might make this a little bit, make the heading a little bit wider to go over the content area. All right. These links, they certainly work and all that, but we might want to add a little bit of styling to them. And we haven't talked about styling links too much. If I give a color to this navigation section, notice that that color doesn't apply to the links. Because the links are sort of their own entity and have their own defaults. And remember our rule that the way our page looks depends on the CSS that we put into uh, the page plus the browser defaults. So links have their own set of defaults. So just changing the color of the section isn't going to do anything for the color of the links. We actually have to go in and set those separately. Now, I'm going to use a selector nav A. What's the difference between using the selector nav A and just using the selector A? It will only affect the A's that are defined in that Right. So if I say A color red, all my links everywhere get the color of red. Let's say I don't want all of them to have red. I only want these to have red. That's where I would put in nav A. And then it's only the links that are in the navigation section. All right. I'm going to start by getting rid of the bullet points. And we've seen this before. Nav, UL. I'm going to say list, style, type, none. Using using what? Uh, in nav A, uh -huh. specify and display no line instead of specifying it in your list style. Well, it's two different things. If I'm if I'm understanding you right, that gets rid of the bullet point. Okay. If we, I think you're saying get rid of the line.
Okay. Now, I'm going to go, and I want to make these links really stand out. I mean, they sort of stand out now, right? But I want to do more with the links to make them stand out. I want to maybe make them look like buttons. All right? So, I'm going to say display inline block. That's that thing that we get where we can control and give it some block properties and some um, inline properties. I'm going to give them a margin top of five pixels. It's going to put space between them, all right? I'm going to say border. One pixel solid black. And I'm going to say background gray. Or let me specify the shade of gray. I'll do RGB 225, 225, 225. That doesn't really look like buttons, so I'm going to give them a width. Okay. Now they start to look like buttons. Okay. Notice that is right up against it, so I'm going to put some padding in here. Maybe make a, I'll make the width a little bit bigger. And I'll say padding 5 pixels. All right. Looking more and more like buttons. And I'm going to change the color to black. And I'm going to say font weight bold. Now, why do I why do I just know these off the top of my head? Because I've you know I've done this a million years, right? So I remember these kind of properties. Do I expect you to remember all these properties? Not right off the bat, right? But it should be easy enough to say how do I use CSS? CSS bold. So you don't know how to do font weight bold because we've never seen it before. CSS bold. Oh, that's the font weight property. Okay? And you can go and use that. Okay. And whatever works, right? And again, there's still things I need to look up. All right? So. It's not like I have the entire CSS rules memorized. The things that I've done a million times, I know. Things I've done a half million times, I might have to look up till I hit a million. All right? So. Well, the way that this is written is anywhere on the button because the link is this whole area. All right? Now. One thing that we can do is we can give a hover effect to this, all right, using what's called a CSS pseudo class, all right. And the pseudo class looks like this. Nav A colon hover which means when I put my mouse over this, I can change it. Now, we could do this, we could change it any number of ways. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to invert the background and the text color. So I'll make the background black, and I'll make the color of the text this.
Now when we put our mouse over that, we get this effect. I think that looks pretty good. All right. Now, another thing that's very useful in navigation is to know that you visited a page. All right. Right now, if we go and click that, we can go over to that page, go over to that page, go over to that page, but we have no idea which, one, which ones we have visited. So therefore, I'm going to put uh, a different rule for a visited, and I'm also going to use a pseudo class. So I'm going to say nav a visited. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll make the background white and the color black. Well, that tells us that we visited those. Still get the hover effect, but notice how the mobile development and the software development and network page, we don't have the visited because, you know, we haven't created those pages yet. So, of course, we haven't visited them. Yes? Um, how would you move the button over a I moved that. I actually didn't do anything to do that. That's actually one of my favorite things to do, is to get something work without doing anything. All right? The, by default, a unordered list indents stuff a little bit. So I didn't go and do anything for that. I just let the browser continue to exhibit its default behavior. And that's an, pardon me? You can probably, yeah, you can move it around. With, I, there's a, if we looked up, that's one of those things I'd have to look up. You look up the, the style rules on the UL and the LI to, to change it. All right. Now, um, in fact, let's, let's look. Looks like using the margin, you can do that. Looks like using the margin and the padding, you can do that. So in this case, if we were to say, padding left, 0px, I shove those over, that, all right. Um, I kind of liked how it was working, so I'm going to leave it like that. Yeah. Right, right. Now, uh, the order does matter for visited because there's actually several statuses for several pseudo classes for links. And that's another thing I don't remember. Link CSS link hover order. They say use You know what's amazing is I saw my answer until it applied all the CSS stuff. And now it's nowhere to be found. And that's the same one. LVHA, link, visited, hover, and then active.
I'm not sure what active means. This, I guess, when you click on it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyhow, active is another state of this. I typically just make sure I use uh, hover. Um, the link, the hover, and the active. I'm not active, visited. Well, that's a good question. All right. Uh, would this be compatible with that? Um, that's a good question. No. Yeah, we can see it. And the good question is, is not, this isn't going to look great in a mobile device. So if we go and view this under using the technique that we saw before, and if I go and pick that I want a Galaxy 500, it's going to look like that. It should be kind of small. All right. We're going to talk about how you can improve the look of the page on mobile devices. All right. So right now, um, Right now, mobile is, is good that you have mobile in the back of your mind, but we're going to learn a lot more to do a better job with that in the upcoming classes. So just sort of keep that filed away in your head that it's important to view what it looks like in a mobile device, but know that we're not quite there yet, all right? Um, this, for example, if you imagine this, a Gallery S5, um, a phone like this big, that probably wouldn't look too great. All right. We can actually apply different style sheets if it's mobile or uh, a desktop version of the site. So right now we're just focused mainly on viewing the site on the computer. And we'll go later to transition to uh, discussing viewing it on the mobile as well. And of course, we can do everything else that we studied before. We can give a different font to this. Let's just do that just out of variety. Let's go on the body and say font family Helvetica Arial. On Sarah. Why didn't this text change? Because that's an image, right? That's not text. And the font only affects that. Good question. Which one is it? The question, the, the issue is, is that not every browser has Helvetica. Not every browser has Arial. So this works sort of in a fallback method. It first tries to make Helvetica the font. If it cannot find Helvetica on the machine, it will make Arial. If it can't find Helvetica or Arial, it makes a generic sans serif font, the font. So it goes that way. In practical uh, terms, Helvetica is on most Macs, but not on most Windows machines. Arial is Microsoft's copy of Helvetica, all right? So it looks about the same as Helvetica, so you'll get about the same look. And if you had some kind of Linux machine that didn't have either of them, you would get your generic sans serif font for that Linux machine.
All right. So it just goes right down the list. So when you pick fonts, they're sort of like fonts that go together that like sort of look the same or very similar. So Helvetica Arial Sans Serif is a very, very, very common uh, thing for fonts. OK. Um, I might as well go and put the link on this back to the portfolio page. just for consistency. So now we could go back to the portfolio home. That sort of messes everything up, though. Eek. That's one of the problems with using absolute position, right? I tweak something, and that just changes everything. So let me go in and change the CSS to add Some to the top, and we're back to looking good. I have a confession also. You were not supposed to have two assignments due last week, all right? You're only supposed to have one assignment due last week, and one of them was supposed to be done this week. So uh, if you did both of them last week, good for you. You get a week off, all right, of not having to turn something in. If you didn't and you fell behind, I'll be lenient. I'm pretty lenient anyhow, but I'll be extra lenient on, on if you turn in the second one late. All right, that was my oversight. When I scheduled it, I just didn't get the dates right. So, No, that's your reward for having two things due last week. <laughs> uh, my suggestion would be is if you, were, if you were really on the ball and gung-ho and got the two assignments done last week, is to spend the time looking at your project. All right? Okay, we'll see you up in the lab.